Hey folks, my name is David Falzgraf, and I'm the founder and lead sound designer here at sundaysounds.com. We're really excited to be able to provide you with high quality song specific main stage patches for today's most popular modern worship songs. Using our main stage patches, you can nail these songs live, even if you're not using backing tracks and you're the only keyboard player. The great thing about all our main stage patches is that you don't need any expensive third party plugins or software. You just need Main Stage 3 running on any modern Mac computer, and you can use these patches live. We've designed this patch at the original tempo and in the original key of the song, but there's a video tutorial on the product page that you can check out after you've purchased the patch if you need to do the song in a different key or at a different tempo than the original. To make things even easier for you, we've pre-mapped this patch to our Sunday Keys Main Stage template. So if you have Sunday Keys, you can just drag and drop this patch right into your concert and it will be pre-mapped to the extra section. There's no setup work or mapping required. Just drag it in, you're ready to play. Now, I'm gonna hand this over to Ryan, who's gonna walk you through the various sections of the patch to teach you how to use it to nail this song live. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, Ryan here from Sunday Sounds. Now, before we actually get started playing this patch, there are just a few things that I would like to go over with you. The first is that we do play this song in its original key of D and at its original tempo of 104 BPM. And so if you did need to change one or both of those things, make sure that you head over to the webpage for this song patch. On that page, you will find a video tutorial that will guide you through making those changes. We also use the mod wheel in this song patch to move in and out between different parts of the song. And so if you don't have a mod wheel, we have a video tutorial over on our blog, and that will guide you through setting up either a fader or a knob to use in place of the mod wheel. And if you don't happen to have faders or knobs on your MIDI keyboard like I do here, you could always pick up a Korg Nano Control 2. It's a really great way to add both faders and knobs straight to your keys rig, and you can use any of those in place of the mod wheel. Plus, we also have this really cool Sunday Keys skin, and it makes the layout really visual if you're using Sunday keys. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this patch. So this one's actually really simple to play. We don't have a bridge and we follow the same chord structure for the verse and the pre-chorus. We start off with the mod wheel all the way down and we have an intro, it's a four chord progression and we play that through two times. And that sounds like this. So in the left hand, we will just be doing single notes, and then we let the chord trigger and all the, the, the step sequencing uh, take over and fill up the space. So we have an A, our B minor here, a G, and a D chord. In the right hand, we have a lead part, and that goes like this. And then in time, Now we end up using this lead in our chorus, so just make sure that you've learned that part because it will come back. From that intro, we move into our first verse. Very similar, as I said before, we are following the same chord structure. So we keep with single notes in the left hand, but we can drop off of that lead in the right hand. Now as we play through this first verse, I like to kick the mod wheel up to anywhere in the 20-30% range. As we move the mod wheel up, we build up the volume of some of the sounds and open up the filters of some, some of the pads. And so that would sound like this. So I'm just going to have you listen to the sweep of that mod wheel range so that you can hear how it builds up the volume. From that verse, we move to our pre-chorus. Now, because we built the mod wheel up about 20 or 30, we'll just leave it where it's at. 
And for the pre-chorus, once again, following that exact same chord structure, this time though, we add in the lower note of that octave. And that sounds like this. So at the very end on that G chord, there is actually one small difference with the chord structure, and that is that we do not go to that D at the end. Instead, we hold out on that G chord, G chord um, for two bars. Now, if you would like, you could even drop off of the last, um, the, the lower note of the left hand octave for that second bar of the G chord, but that's up to you. From there, we move into the chorus, and we're gonna keep with the octaves in the left hand, in the right hand, we bring back in that lead line that we had in our intro, and we kick the mod wheel all the way up to 100%. This will be a rule for every time we go to the chorus, mod wheel at 100. And so that chorus sounds like this. Now at the end of this chorus, we are going to fade the mod wheel back down to 50 as we go into our verse. We can do that on that last D chord of the chorus. So that transition would look something like this. And just so that you don't feel stressed to, to get to that mod wheel really quick on that D chord, you could also leave it at full and then while you're playing the verse, just dial it back down. And that would sound something like this. So we do go back in to our second verse here. It's going to be very similar to the first verse where we're just playing single notes in that left hand. In the right hand, there is an optional lead part that you can add, and we're just playing a D note on top of the chords, and, and that would sound like this. From that verse, we move into our second pre-chorus. We leave the mod wheel at 50%, and bring in the full octaves. Now the only difference between having the mod wheel at 50 for that pre-chorus and at 20 or 30 like we did for our first pre-chorus is that at 50% we actually, we actually introduce another ARP. I'm going to let you just hear that and then fade it out. So of course, it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did have this at 50% uh, during that first pre-chorus. So from that pre-chorus, we move into our next chorus. Once again, we kick the mod wheel up to 100. Octaves in the left hand. In the right hand, we have that lead line. The only difference with this chorus is that this time, at the end, we repeat a few of the chords. I'm going to run through this whole entire chorus so you can see it all play out, and that sounds like this.
So we've covered every part except for there's one change in our final pre-chorus. So we have mod wheel at 50 when we go into that pre-chorus. We're gonna keep the left hand the same with the octaves, but we bring in this filtered synth lead in the right hand. Now it's a filtered lead because we actually modulate the filter with an LFO. And so as we open and close that filter, it changes the, um, it cuts down on the high frequencies and lets them through. So we have this nice volume swell effect going on in the right hand. And that would sound like this. And that lead line is just A, B, D, E. Okay, so that is all of the parts of the song. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. It's actually a really fun and easy song to play with a lot of awesome keys parts going on. Before I let you go, I just wanted to let you know that we do have a Facebook group. It is called Sunday Sounds Insiders. And over there, you are going to find a community of tons of like-minded worship keyboard players. We talk about main stage, sound design, and all sorts of keys and worship related topics. We also post a song patch poll there every so often where you can vote for the next song patch that we will be making. So it would be really cool to see you over in that group. Until then, I'm Ryan from Sunday Sounds, and we'll see you next time.